Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And Meg, what do we got in our hands today? Today we are talking about the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. Do we need to go into the fact that we weren't always fans of On, or can we just move on into the future since we've been running in the Monster and the Cloud Surfer and even the Cloud Go that we've liked these shoes and they move forward and we're digging them, or do we have to talk trash? No, I think we can just we can just talk about the good stuff. And we're gonna talk to you about their race day. Is this a super shoe, Meg? I mean, this is definitely a super shoe. This is the race day shoe that On is pushing hard right now. Who are some of the athletes that have been running this and winning races? Helen O'Beary, kind of a big deal. Just won the BAA 10K in a pair. I also raced in this in the BAA 10K. Did not run as fast. Let's cover what people want to know, and that's all the details about the shoe. All right, so we like to start with the upper. This is a, they're calling it a microfiber upper. It's very thin, very breathable, and what's really nice about it is that it's very water resistant. I love to use this word. You don't seem to be adopting hydrophobic. it. Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. Maybe I am hydrophobic, that's the <laughs> word. So like when you're sweating a ton in the summer, it does a really nice job of just sort of repelling that and not soaking it up and making the shoe heavier. All right, I can't wait. I know we're gonna talk about how you ran it, but you just did a very warm, what was the temperature at the start of the BAA A million, 10K? one million degrees. One million degrees. So were you sweating? I was sweating. I was sweating on my warm up. I was sweating profusely after about mile one. It was a very hot, humid day in Boston. A lot of times your shoe feels soaked and it feels heavier and squishy. How'd the shoe feel with all that sweat with so, on this upper? Despite the very uncomfortable temperature and general racing time, the shoes felt great. And especially the upper, like I was saying, did not hold on to any of that sweat. It just sort of disappeared. One thing that I like about this shoe, they incorporated a few different lacing holes on this upper so you can get the proper fit for yourself. I was fine with it just like regular. I ended up using a runner's knot because there's extra shoelace and I'm guessing there's extra shoelaces in case you want to use these other holes to get a different fit. The shoelace, it's thin like an Adidas shoelace, but I found it much easier to like kind of adjust and get the right fit and it stayed tied. I was gonna say, this sucker will stay tied. In fact, mine is still tied from the last time I ran in it. I didn't even double knot or anything. I just did like a simple regular tie and I never had an issue in any of my runs. I also like the gusseted tongue. It stays in place, it has just the right amount of padding to protect that top of your foot. I didn't have any heel slippage and there's not a ton of cushioning in this heel counter, but it was just enough to lock down the ankle and to feel nice and snug in there. No issues at all with the fit or the uh, heel lift, Robbie's pair and my pair did run a little bit long. It wasn't something that really bothered me, but there was more than a thumbnail between my toe and the top of the shoe. In my first thoughts video, I mentioned that I wish that there was some more support around the collar and heel. After racing in the 10K, it was not an issue for me. So maybe it would be nice to have a little extra padding or comfort around here, but it's it was not an issue. All right, Meg, what makes a super shoe super? So what everyone wants to hear about is this very exciting midsole, which for the first time on is using Piba or Pbax midsole. It's also 46% bio-based material. Apparently it's made out of castor beans or something. Isn't your coach Coach Castor? Yes. So he must approve of this year. We talked about it. He said it was okay. This is a very light and bouncy foam. And then you also have a full length carbon fiber plate sandwiched in here. Wait a second, you just said light. Do you really feel like there's a light shoe? I think yeah. it feels light when you're running, but when I weighed mine, I was surprised at the actual weight of the shoe. What do you got? So for my size 10 and a half, this weighs 8.7 ounces or 247 grams, which is a whole ounce heavier than say the Nike Vaporfly. The Nike Vaporfly is on a different level of lightness, which so I'll agree with you there. My women's seven and a half was 6.6 .6 ounces. I think my Vaporfly is about 5.3, however, most of my racing shoes fall somewhere between mid six ounces to high five ounces. So one thing that's really noticeable in this shoe for me was the plate. And you did get the sinking feeling behind the toes here. You know what word I want to say? Fat pad? Yeah, right, right on your fat pad. I love the fat pad. <laughs> if it don't got fat pad, my anaconda don't want none. Okay, none. Oh. <laughs> Literally no. <laughs> So when you land, you do feel that nice squish under the foot and you feel that pop 
from the plate. <laughs> I can't, I can't do this anymore. What you just said. <laughs> Uh, Do you agree? I can't come back from that. All right. One other thing I will note, which was strange because it does have an almost 10 millimeter drop. It's 9.5. 9.5. Like, if you're going, why not just go all the way up to 10? When I was running, I got the weird sensation, Meg, that this was a negative drop. It's almost like the front felt higher than the heel. I don't know how to explain that. Well, and just looking at the shoe, there's plenty of cushioning under the forefoot. And I, I also did not feel like it was a nearly 10 millimeter drop, but that's what they're saying. That's yeah. what they're telling us. Even a lot of the shoes in the super shoe yeah. category are flaring out under the front of the foot. So you get more of a stable feel. This one feels like you're running on rails. I mean, I think it feels similar to the Vaporfly. When I was deciding what to race in, I was choosing between this shoe and the Vaporfly. They both have that that narrow feel and a little bit of maybe un unstable at times, but I feel like the purpose of this shoe, at least in my opinion, is to be running fast. And, and get up on those toes. And, and maybe I would save this for the shorter distances. I did a lot of my miles on the treadmill with this one. So I was able to pick up and set paces and just kind of like cruise at it. So I was doing somewhere in between my marathon pace and my half marathon pace. The shoe really sang for me in that zone. Now you were racing, which is a little bit different. You were going as hard as you could. What did the shoe feel like? And would you choose it again for another race? Yeah, so I thought what was really nice is, and maybe it's because I was so distracted by all of the other discomforts happening during the race, but I kind of forgot about my shoes. And I felt that on a lot of my workouts too, where you're just, you're rolling through your stride, everything feels good, it feels light, it feels like you're getting that extra bounce, and you kind of just forget entirely about your shoes, which I think is a key that's factor. The, that's the dream. Yeah, so I'm actually going to be racing again in a few days, and I think I'm gonna put this back on. Mm. Now that, to me, is when you know that you really like a shoe because once we're done reviewing it, we have other shoes that we have to put on, or you can go back to a favorite and go ahead and run in that. So the fact that you're gonna lace this back up for another 10K, it's another 10K, isn't it? It is. Mistakes are being made. Oh, someone likes punishment over here. I feel like it belongs in the super shoe top 10 category, maybe top five, but between the weight, and we gotta mention it, the, the price. price. So this one's gonna cost you, if you want it, July 9th it'll be available, $289. Nearly $300. That sounds like $290. Yeah. Uh, what's ta with taxes? You're probably gonna be paying $300. Yeah. So So for me, I don't know, Meg. I, I think there's other shoes in the category that I might choose over this one based on the fact that it it's not like it's light years ahead of anything else. I feel like I could get the same performance out of some of the other ones. I mean, this is this is in my top two racing shoes right now for the anything under the half marathon. I'm either going Vaporfly or this, or the OnCloud. So I think everyone probably knows I'm gonna give this one a green light. Uh, I don't know, there you there go. There it is. Yeah, you are. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably gonna race in it again. I'm gonna give it a green light because I think it's a good choice. And if it matches up with how you wanna run, then I think that you've got a super shoe from on that you can uh, get down with. I almost want to throw it to that middle level for the price. I, I don't know. I, I think there's shoes that I would choose for the marathon. Definitely above this, like you said. And I don't know that I need a half marathon fast day shoe. So right. maybe if I was a little lighter, a little more efficient, this would be my choice. But I like something with a little more squish, a little more pop. Uh, for race day, but I'm still giving this a green because I think it's a really good shoe. I like the cushioning. I like the plate. The upper fits great. I think it's the right direction for on. By the time people are seeing this, we're in the middle of grit. Yeah. So make sure that you're following along on Instagram. We put all the stories together and we share some of the stuff that you're doing, share some of the stuff that we're doing, and keep you engaged for the month of July to get your miles in. Also, another way to keep in track with us is our podcast. Make, how many podcasts do we have? We have two podcasts. We have The Drop, which comes out every Friday if you want to hear about us and the ridiculous things we're doing. Like running 10Ks? Yeah. And then every Monday we interview a guest, which is either an athlete, a coach, someone in the industry. And then our other podcast is Fuel for the Soul, which we host with Megan Featherston. That comes out every two weeks on Tuesday. And it's everything about hydration and nutrition for performance. That's the one if you want to up your game for racing and get yourself really tuned up nice. Learning about nutrition is what made Meg go from a three-hour marathoner to a 247, 246? 
247. 247 marathoner. So check that out. Also, our weekly email, sign up for it and you'll get everything. You'll get all our podcasts, all our videos, all in one neat package once a week. Yeah. All right, so that's it. Bye. See you next time. I know you don't like being too close to the camera. Brand, don't be doing close up shots. Yeah, don't, do not zoom up into our faces. <laughs> yeah, like this is about as much as you need to zoom in. That's no, it. Just don't zoom in. Oh. Just, just keep it. No, he needs to do cuts when we're talking. To the shoe, maybe. All right. <laughs>